Do you have a roast in your freezer? You probably have a couple because you've been neglecting them. And I don't blame you. They're kind of boring sometimes. So we're going to change it up a bit. We're going to make French dips with the roast and you are going to absolutely love it. It's going to come out tender. It's going to come out juicy and you're going to want to keep eating it. So we're going to use a big roast and we got people here. So everybody's going to eat today. So here's what you're going to need. One large wild game roast, figure about a pound and a half per two people. And if that roast has more than one muscle group in it, it's fine. It's going to be cooked low and slow. It'll be tender. Trust me. You'll need two types of cheeses. The first is going to be Havarti, figure one quarter pound per two people. The second cheese at the same ratio is provolone. And if you can, get it from a locally owned deli, because small business is good business. Two to three cups of stock, and I know, it's so much better when you make it yourself. But I've been a firefighter for my entire adult life. I'm not down with burning bones. A stock additive, and the cubes are fine, but this is gonna be for the au jus sauce. And if you're gonna use liquid, I like adding the liquid. Three cloves of garlic, even if one is camera shy. One white onion per two people you're cooking for. A stick of salted butter. One shaker of steak seasoning, and Montreal's fine, but again, I like using local businesses, and I checked, these guys don't have an online website to buy from. But if you live within an hour of the Northeast Ohio region, go here. It's worth it. One tablespoon of whole black peppercorns, and optionally, a pinch or two of flaky salt, right when you put all the meat on top of the sandwich. You can, or you don't have to. It's up to you. And last but not least, a baguette. No sub buns, baguettes only. And what you'll need is one baguette per three people. Mama, that's some good looking bread. And once you're done with your breadgasm, it's time to clean the silver skin off the meat. And you can do this during the butchering process, but I leave it on because it helps protect it against freezer burn. So that fat and that silver skin, it's time to cut it off. So cut it off thinly, don't take off too much meat, and don't worry about the membranes in between the muscle groups. That's gonna cook down and be super tender in the cooking process. Once you've cleaned the whole surface area of the silver skin and the fat, then you can chop off the ends. And not too much, you're just trying to make it a little bit more even throughout the entire piece of meat. And at this point, you'll need to take butcher's twine and wrap it together tightly so it all cooks evenly and brings those muscle groups together like a harmony from Simon and Garfunkel themselves. And at this point, grab the shaker steak seasoning and shake it like a Polaroid and give it a very generous coating because this is the only seasoning that's going on the roast itself. Be sure to coat every side and both ends and then set it on a baking tray and stick a meat thermometer in there. And this is where you have to set it to 129 degrees only. And yes, 129 is a little rare, but it's not going to be the last step of the cooking process. So once it's ready, set it in an oven set to 225. And honestly, you could use a smoker too, but for this one, I just want to go straight oven. Now that the meat has started its low and slow process, Cut your onion right down the center and then give it slices just thick enough to where you can see the knife in between each slice. Then add the onion to a skillet that's been heated to medium heat and then give it a shower of olive oil. Toss in two tablespoons of butter and then agitate to mix all the good things together. And to caramelize your onions correctly, you'll have to agitate from time to time for the next 35 to 40 minutes. If you had to reduce your heat because it looks like they're burning just a little bit, go ahead and do so. This is another low and slow process. 
At this point, you can start the au jus sauce by pouring the stock into a saucepan on medium heat. But go slow so you don't splash it everywhere and just wind up making a big old mess. Then drop in two tablespoons of butter and then add your one tablespoon of whole peppercorns. Then add your stock additive, which could be three cubes or two spoons of this, which the first one came out a little heavy, so the second one I made just a little bit lighter. And then add your garlic cloves, and once it starts to boil on the sides, reduce to low heat and let it simmer for the entire time that your roast is cooking. Next, you'll want to slice the baguettes. Cut each one into thirds and be gentle so you don't make breadsticks out of it. And if you want to be as particular as I am, find out which side looks best, find a good angle to where the meat won't fall out of the sandwich, and then slice gently. But don't slice all the way through, leave just enough so you can open it slowly so you don't break the crust and you have a nice apparatus to bring all the good meat and cheese right into your mouth. And then repeat until all your bread dreams are satisfied. And then on a heated griddle, spread some butter and take a moment to look at your caramelized onions because those look just perfect. Then place the baguette open side down and place something on top of it, maybe one or two pounds so you don't smash it, because this will expose as much surface area as possible of the bread to the butter to give it a nice sear. And then after one to two minutes, check the bread, be sure it didn't burn, should look like this, maybe a little bit more covered, but that's okay. And then remove and then repeat. And once the roast is 129 degrees, remove from the oven and let it rest for about 10 minutes. And while it's resting, heat up a cast iron to a high heat and then add some bacon grease. And if you don't have that lying around, that's fine. A high smoke point oil is fine too. And then add the roast and sear it on each side. And it should sound like this. And then after about a minute and a half, go ahead and flip it. Then continue to do so for each side, and which each side is done and seared perfectly, set it onto a cutting board and let it rest for about 10 minutes and nothing less. This resting process is very important. It's going to keep juices in the meat while you're cutting it and it's gonna keep your hand from burning because it'll be too hot if you try to cut it right now. Good gravy, look at that thing. After the roast had its little power nap, go and cut all the strings off of it. And now it's time to slice, so slice it as thinly as possible, ignoring the fact that it might be the most delicious piece of meat that you've ever cooked in your life. And all you really wanna do is grab it run to the backyard and eat it like a Neanderthal, not sharing it with anybody. And once it's all sliced, it's finally time to conform the apparatus to bring all this goodness straight into your mouth. So stack the meat, but don't make it all flat. You want it to be a little bouncy, so it gives you good texture and good flavor profile of every single part of the sandwich. Then give it a healthy layer of the caramelized onions, spreading it evenly throughout the sandwich. And then add the cheese, starting with the Havarti, because it's a softer cheese and it'll melt quicker than the provolone. And to melt the cheese, you can stick it in the oven on a broil, but I don't recommend that, because it's gonna add too much heat to the meat and it might make the sandwich a little hard. So grab a torch and burn that mama jama. But not actually like burn it, just give it like a, a good sear. Make the cheese boil, make it melt, and then give it a good char. And once it starts to look like this, 
put the torch in a safe place, grab some ajou sauce, and get ready for all your problems of the world to melt away and enjoy the best sandwich ever. After this many hours, which really wasn't that long, we're finally to the point where we can actually eat our food. And this is absolutely delicious. We have butter seared bread. The meat came out perfectly. The glaze over the cheese is just absolutely awesome. I cannot wait to bite into this. I can feel it running down my cheek, and I don't even care. This is tender, it is savory. That melted cheese on there is just absolutely perfect. Good Lord. Absolutely, this is a must make. I mean, it is perfect. But most importantly, I hope you give the game that you acquired from the field the respect that it deserves.